transporter with a turbocharger boost control position sensor circuit implausible signal. Now, when the vehicle first came in, you can see from the snapshot data, this is when I was been playing with it, that the charge pressure actuator acknowledgement was 99.9%. Uh, idle, you expect it to be 100% pretty much, which is spot on. So what we found was, you run the engine up, look at charge pressure actuator activation and charge pressure actuator actual position is that it runs at 60 odd percent sometimes and also will run at 100 percent sometimes uh, but then when you look at the turbocharger actuator position you can see on the voltage 2600 millivolts roughly 67 percent which is about what i'd expect after a while of running the engine seems to recalibrate where it thinks 100% is as just perfectly on cue so now the actuator position hasn't moved at all but the actuator acknowledgement is now 100% because it thinks it's got full vac going to the actuator therefore it must be 100% must be that voltage uh, which it isn't because if you look around here So as you can see there, the actuator wasn't quite on its stop. The ECU thinks that it's at 100% actuator position, so it would expect the turbo to produce in all the boost that it can produce. But with the actuator not on the stop, it's not going to be. It will, it will under boost at this point, and the ECU will wonder why. So we know now that that actuator position of 99% is a lie, because the 2600 millivolts indicates that we're only part of the way through our travel on the actuator. The next job is to check that the actuator itself has a full range of movement. So we can just pump that up with this here vacuum pump. And if we supply it with more than it was getting by itself, we should be able to see that it will be on the stop. And as you can see, no light passing through. The actuator is all the way down to its stop. Which is perfect. So I've connected the vacuum gauge in line with the vacuum supply to the turbo actuator to see what is going on there, whilst also monitoring position and percentage of actuator acknowledgement. As you can see, with the actuator off, 780 millivolts is pretty much exactly what we expect for a fully sort of off boost position for the actuator. Um, even though it displays 36%, I'm not really overly fussed about that end of it because that is that is what it's doing. So we'll fire it up and see what the vacuum does. So initially we can see it's gone over 100% actuator position. We got that 2,700 millivolts. You probably see that drop back to 2,600 as the leak develops. What we believe is the leak. But either way, 2,700 millivolts isn't 100% actuator position. You can see the vacuum being supplied to the actuator isn't great. It's also dying off slightly. So, we've got a lack of vacuum, in my opinion. So, we'll move on and find out why. So now we've established the actuator can pull itself all the way down to the stop with the vacuum pump. Uh, I've actually pressure tested the vacuum uh, reservoir with the vacuum pump by pumping it up manually. Um, but I also now want to just empty it back out and test to see how much vacuum the engine itself can produce, or the vacuum pump can produce. <laughs> I'd want to see inside of that chamber and it's still dropping. 
wheel drop right way down to sort of below minus half a bar. That's sick. But that's not enough. It needs more than that to pull that actuator all the way down to the stop. You can see now it's beyond there. So we have a vacuum leak somewhere in the system. Which we will now investigate. So I've been around with the vacuum pump and checked the condition of the diaphragm for the EGR cooler. Uh, we've already checked the turbo actuator diaphragm because it works and we're happy that the, the N75 valve is working because we fitted a new one because it seemed to be getting incredibly hot, but that wasn't the problem. The leak appears to be within the EGR cooler changeover system. Even though we've proved the diaphragm's okay, so I start the engine back up. We're still connected to the reservoir at the moment. You can see that initial vacuum surge. Then it dies off slowly, slowly. So let that run and die back down to where it was sitting. really basic test now because I would just go around and squeeze vacuum hoses just so they, they're blocked to try and find out where that vacuum is actually leaking. So we'll start off with the, the output on this EGR changeover. Squeeze that makes no difference at all. And that's right by the EGR cooler. If I squeeze the vacuum input an improvement. Perfect vacuum. So the issue we've got is actually an internal leak within this diaphragm inside of this solenoid. The easy to do a changeover. The vacuum is actually bypassing and coming out through the vent at the top rather than staying in the system. The, uh, the vacuum that goes to the CGR through a changeover should either come in there top one should either go to the vacuum over changeover or it should hold the vacuum. The vent is for the diaphragm vacuum to dissipate when it wants to switch it off, not for the vacuum coming in, which it appears to be doing at the moment. So a new EGR changeover solenoid and it should be good to go. Okay, so we flanked off the actuator. You see immediately it jumps up to 3,600 millivolts, but it thought it was 130% actuator movement, which it wasn't. And then all of a sudden it just recalibrates itself to realize that that is actually 100% and all is fine. Making it incredibly difficult to diagnose because you would assume it knows where 100% is and it doesn't guess it, but apparently it does. So there we go. Vacuum system diagnosis on a T5.1.